Hey, what's going on, everybody? Corey here, and welcome to episode 13 of my show called Loving the Covenant. This is episode 13 of Loving the Covenant, and on this show, I talk about politics from a biblical worldview. I use scripture, the Bible, and my political argumentation, and I have a lot of topics to talk about today, and I have a list of them right in front of me. And uh, here's what the topics are. Uh, going to talk about Joe Biden and some of his comments about COVID in July 4th. Also, I want to talk about uh, something that's very significant about July 4th. Uh, March 16th this week, uh, the one-year anniversary of flattening the curve, which was supposed to originally just take two weeks. Uh, I'm going to read from a mask study uh, concerning masks and how effective they are against coronavirus. I'm uh, going to talk about Asian hate crimes, what's really going on there, something that the news isn't going to tell you. The Grammys and cancel culture, Cardi B. Um, I'm going to talk about abortion. I'm going to talk about the new Dead Sea Scrolls that were discovered, James Coates and Christian persecution. And in my Anime is Insane segment, I'm going to talk about the new Boruto manga chapter. And I'm going to end it, of course, with the gospel and proclamation of Christ as King. So without a further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so first thing I got pulled up right here is an article from BBC News. And let me click on it. Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay, COVID pandemic. Biden eyes 4th of July as Independence Day from virus. Okay, um, not really surprising. This is kind of stupid because it's Independence Day from an oppressive government in Britain. Um, the British, not Independence Day from the virus. Uh, so this is really, really stupid. But some, some things that he said, so let's read from this. President Joe Biden has said he's hopeful that America can mark independence from COVID-19 on July 4th if people get vaccinated. In his first uh, prime time address as president, Mr. Biden said that he would order states to make all adults el eligible for vaccinations by the 1st of May. Current measures prioritize people by age or health condition. Mr. Biden was speaking exactly a year to the day after the outbreak was classified as a global pandemic. Half a million Americans have since died, more than the death toll from World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War combined, according to Biden. Um, that's not true. Uh, that's not true. A lot of... <laughs> a lot of people have been criticizing him for this. Uh, he just can't do math. So many more people died from those wars. Also, you know, the COVID death rate is inflated, right? If someone dies of a heart attack or a car accident and they have COVID in their system, they count it as a COVID death. So we really don't even know the correct number. Um, but yeah, here, here's some other things that, that were said. Um, in his speech, President Biden said he did not expect large events to be able to go ahead, but he hoped small groups could meet again. If we do this together, by the 4th of July, there is a good chance you and your family and friends can get together in your backyard or in your neighborhood and have a cookout or a barbecue and celebrate Independence Day. He said, after a long, hard year, that will make this Independence Day truly special, where we not only mark our independence as a nation, but we begin to mark our independence from this virus. This is ridiculously stupid. Okay, first of all, thank you so much, so much, Joe Biden, for giving us permission to have people at our house. Um, nobody should, nobody should refuse to be with their family and friends, especially on holidays, because the government says not to, right? Uh, we don't do this for the flu or influenza. We don't do this with anything else that can, that has the potential to kill us, but only for COVID. Um, I don't care what Joe Biden says. I'm going to hang out with wh whoever I want to, uh, cause I'm free. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really stupid. Uh, I think everybody should have massive 4th of July get togethers, um, have big barbecues, enjoy the company of your loved ones, hang out, M make it, make it a several day thing, right? Eat all you want. 
who cares what Biden says? And also being independent from this virus. Look, viruses and disease have, have diseases have always been around. They've always been around. Um, in all likelihood, COVID, just like the flu and influenza and the common cold and other serious diseases that are far more serious, as, serious than COVID and the flu, are here to stay. That's usually how things go with diseases. So, yeah, this is really stupid. And Independence Day is about being independent of an oppressive government, being free from an oppressive government that's trying to rain down tyranny and keep you from being free. That's what the 4th of July is about, Joe Biden. Let us be free. And it's amazing. Hey, we're going to lock you down, force you to wear masks, and if you do what we say, then maybe we'll let you be free again. And says that the 4th of July can be about being independent from the virus. The virus never caused anybody to close the down or have small gatherings. The government did. And people being stupid, of course. Because if everybody just disobeyed, you know, they can't get all of us. Um... But yeah, using Independence Day to be tyrannical when Independence Day is about freedom from tyranny. Only Biden, only the Democratic Party. Um, it's The irony is thick, is all I got to say there. So, um, also, you know, March 16th, this week, the one-year anniversary, one entire year, um, it's the anniversary of two weeks to flatten the curve and it's turned into over a year and we're still dealing with government overreach. It's been over a year and the government is still placing restrictions, uh, mask mandates. Every state should be open. There is no reason to not be. Um, it's it's unbelievable. Um, but speaking of coronavirus, uh, let's go to this Danish mask study. Again, I want to recommend everybody go to uh, Rumble. Um, yeah, let's interact with this. Yeah, go to Rumble, to the channel on Rumble. Uh, the Biblical Science Institute, where Jason Lyle talks about coronavirus, uh, and he talks about uh, masks and how effective they are and whether or not they work. This is one of those studies that he talks about. Now, you might notice before, I was saying go listen to him on YouTube. Well, YouTube, YouTube took down that video for going against community guidelines, really just for telling the truth. Um, but it's still up on Rumble, and you can find all that information there. And again, this is one of the studies. It's a Danish study called um, Effectiveness of Adding a Mask Recommendation to Other Public Health Measures to Prevent SARS-CoV-2 Infection in Danish Mask Wear. So it's a Danish study, a randomized control trial with a crap ton of people. And this is what they had to say. So let's... Uh, Look at the background. Observational evidence suggests that mask wearing uh, mitigates transmission of severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2, so it's a form of coronavirus, as a virus. It is uncertain if this observed association arises through protection of in uninfected wearers uh, via reduced transmission from infected mask wearers or both. The objective to assess whether recommending surgical mask use outside of the home reduces wearer's risks, risk of SARS-CoV-2 infection in a setting where masks were uncommon and not among recommended public health measures. So, they're testing that. They're having people wear masks to see if they work. All right. So, now let's... You can go read the whole study. I'm not going to read the entire study. 3,000 participants, right? 3,000 participants. And let's let's read this right here. All right. A total of 3,030 participants were randomly assigned to the recommendation to wear masks. 
uh, and 2,994 were assigned to control um, 4,862 4, completed the study. Uh, so these are the people that they're going to pull the results from. Infection with SARS-CoV-2 occurred in 42 participants uh, in the recommended masks group, uh, which is 1.8% 1, 1 of those people. In 53 controlled participants, 2.1%. Um, the between group difference was a 0.3 percentage point. Oh, minus 0.3 uh, percentage point. So... Uh, multiple imputation accounting for loss to follow up yielded similar results, although the difference observed was not statistically significant. The 95% uh, CIs are compatible with a 46% reduction to a 23% increase in infection. So, again, the people that were, were wearing masks, 1.8% got infected. The people who are not, 2.1% got infected. Just about no difference at all. And they didn't even, they say they can't even conclude that it was because of mask wearing, because it's such a small percentage. They said right here where my cursor is, that the difference observed was not statistically significant. So the conclusion of this study is the following. The recommendation to wear surgical masks to supplement other public health measures did not reduced the SARS-CoV-2 infection rate among wearers by more than 50% in a community with modest infection rates, some degree of social distancing, and uncommon general mask use. The data were uh, compatible with lesser degrees of self-protection. So the, they conclude that it didn't reduce anything. Um, it says it's not statistically significant. The masks essentially did nothing, made no statistical difference whatsoever. Um that's really important information. So to summarize, to summarize, um, this study right here, this Danish study on whether or not masks work to prevent the spread and infection of coronavirus or viruses in general, SARS-CoV-2, it doesn't make a statistical difference, doesn't reduce chance of infection that matters that really matters and this was this is a study that was done in 2020 i think it was uh april and may of 2020 so really important information right there all right i'm gonna pull that to the side and let's talk let's change gears and talk a little bit about these asian hate crimes asian hate crimes interact scroll down all right so we have Louder with Crowder right here. And what's what, what are we hearing on the news, right? White people, white privilege, white people are being racist against Asians. It's just white people attacking Asians. And this is because Trump uh, used the term China virus, even though it comes from China. And we have things like the Spanish flu because of where it comes from and where it originates. And, I mean, who it starts with, it's not racist. It's just how we've always named diseases. Um, but louder with Crowder, right, uh, has been talking about this and some very interesting information that I'm going to read from. And all the sources are right here. You can go to, you can go to his website and his show and see the sources. So violence against Asian Americans. Let's read this. There's been a spike in Asian hate crimes in the past year, and this is terrible, but Democrats like Nancy Pelosi are, of course, using this to blame their political opponents. Media claim it's all because of Trump's, of, of Trump's hateful rhetoric, systemic racism, and all that stuff. In reality, the attackers are not a bunch of white guys in MAGA hats. The vast majority of the attackers on Asians, you know, these hate crimes, these anti-Asian hate crimes, the majority of the attackers are black and Arab or Arabic. Um, this dynamic isn't new to COVID. A 2008 San Francisco Police Department survey found that 85% of physical assault crimes consisted of a black attacker and an Asian victim. And there's a source right there too. 
So this is something that is, is not new. It's been going on for a long time, 2008 to right now. And in 2008, there was a survey that found that most of these people are not even white. Uh, what else happened in 2020, 2020 to contribute to this crime wave besides coronavirus? Six months of BLM riots. The San Francisco district attorney pulled the charges from the crime in the last clip to promote restorative justice. Um, and you can find the source on that. So, yeah, a lot of interesting information there, a lot of true information here. And, um, yeah, really sheds a lot of light on what's actually going on and how much uh, the media just does not do news. It's fake news. Just go to Daily Wire and Crowder show for your news. Um, let's talk about the Grammys. The Grammys, where is it at? Grammys woke BS is what I have it named in here. So let's do this. Except Miss Candace Owens here. Okay, yeah. Oh gosh, I don't even want to talk about this. So I didn't watch the Grammys. I hate the Grammys. Um, but you can read this article from the Daily Wire. Grammy ratings hits lowest of the low. Only 8.8 .8 million tune in versus 19 million just last year. Um, yeah, increasingly political award shows keep plunging in the ratings. Because people don't want everything to be political and everything to have some sort of political agenda. And also... When it's really leftist and woke, that does turn a lot of people off. There's a lot more conservative people who are who who don't agree with the entire narrative of the left than people realize. Um, and at the Grammys, at the Grammys, there was this whole thing, you know. There's BLM stuff, you know, the whole shooting at the Wendy's, um, you know, a music video that was played, where, you know, they set the Wendy's on fire. And it's like, first of all, um, not okay. You don't destroy other people's property or, you know, put other people's lives in danger because you're mad or misinformed or have a bad worldview. Okay, that whole shooting in the Wendy's parking lot, the guy uh, took the officer's weapon and aimed it at him and was running off with it. Um that they leave that at, you know, it's supposedly because of white privilege, white supremacy and racism. But the fact is he was a threat to the police officers, took their weapon and then became a threat to the public. They had to stop him. Um, but not according to the Grammys, uh, you know, cancel culture, right? Get rid of Dr. Seuss books, get rid of Mr. Potato head, get rid of, uh, Gina Carano, right? Get rid of all that stuff. It, but, you know, you have Cardi B getting up on stage and basically doing softcore porn with some other chick on stage performing their hit song WAP. And you know what that stands for. That doesn't need to be canceled, though, because that's empowering. Even though it's disgusting and degrading. Number, I think it's what, like the number one song in the last year, one of the most popular songs ever. Young people are listening to it. People are loving this woman for that song. And it's garbage. Right? And then, you know, you have cancel culture and woke, woke culture. You know, cancel all these other things that aren't bad at all. Even things that kind of even have a biblical message to them, right? If it's if it's conservative, cancel it. But if you're singing about your WAP and doing softcore porn and basically sliding all over another woman on stage, don't cancel that. And, you know, cancel culture never goes after the porn industry. What about pornography, Pornhub, OnlyFans, thirst traps, right? What about, you know, people twerking all over social media? They don't care about that at all. So, yeah, just wanted to talk about that a little bit. And, whoops, something else that should be, come on, man.
something else that should be canceled, abortion, something that should be totally criminalized is abortion, Planned Parenthood, abortion clinics, abortionists. Um, let's pull this image up. By the way, image I've pulled up right here, babies are still murdered here, and babies are still murdered here. Um, both documentaries by Marcus Pittman and Apologia Studios. Go watch those. Really, really good information in those. Um, so, uh, abortion is murder. We know this scientifically and biblically. First of all, biblically, right? Uh, thou shalt not murder, right? You have uh, examples in scripture like of Pharaoh and Herod killing uh, firstborn males, right? That's condemned in scripture. Uh, Exodus 21 and Leviticus, uh, both uh, together teach, you know, if, if, a preg if you have a pregnant woman and you hit that pregnant woman and the baby dies, you get the death penalty. And, you know, there's the whole thing uh, in Leviticus about, you know, child sacrifice, sacrificing your babies to Molech, which was an idol, a false god. And people who did that got the death penalty. Um, and then there are, you know, verses, other verses, uh, you know, God saying, you know, I formed your inward parts before I formed you. I knew you. I knitted you together in your mother's womb. And, you know, at right at conception, right, according to King David in Psalm 51, is that when he was conceived, he was a sinner, right? When John the Baptist and Jesus are conceived and in the womb, they're called he, they're called, you know, sons and, and children. They're spoken of as if they're alive, right? So you have all those examples in Scripture. By the way, throughout all of church history, the church has been against aborting babies. Just want to throw that out there. Um, so all of that information right there, but, so, you know, so biblically and historically and scientifically, right? Scientifically, we know that this is a human, be a living human being from conception, right? So right at conception, you have a unique genetic code when that sperm and egg um, come together and conception or fertilization happens, right? Life doesn't begin at implantation. It doesn't begin sometime later. It begins right at conception uh, because there's a unique genetic code that is now there. Everything about that human being, male, female, eye color, hair color, is already there. All of their genetic information, their DNA, Everything about them biologically is there. And they're alive, right? It, it, this, is a, this is now alive and it's going through uh, stages of development. It's growing, right? Uh, if it's not alive, how is it growing? If it's not a human, why is it human DNA, right? And so this is the argument that the left makes is, you know, in terms of, you know, you're human based on your size, level of development, degree of dependency, and environment, right? But just because you're smaller doesn't mean you're not human, right? Just because you're small in the womb from conception and onward, that doesn't mean you're less human, right? Shorter people aren't less human than taller people. Uh, degree of dependency, right? All kids post birth are dependent on their parents for survival so you can't make that argument either uh, environment you know where you are well it's in the womb so it's not a person it's not even a foot foot of difference where you are doesn't determine who you are or what you are and um, level of development development goes on for years after birth decades after birth right developing is something that is ongoing throughout so many stages of your life so you can't use that argument either. But I would also say uh, human beings have God's law written on their heart. And uh, so people do know that it's murder, right? Everybody knows that it's murder. Um, the problem is human beings are swift to shed blood. They love the murder of children. That's the problem. Um, so abortion is murder. It is absolutely murder. There's no way around it. Biblically, it's murder. Historically, scientifically, ultimately what matters is, is if the Bible says so. Um, and it needs to be abolished and criminalized. 
not just in the United States, but all over the world. Um, it's not a law, by the way. The Supreme Court cannot make laws. But um, go support Apology of Studios and End Abortion Now. Watch Babies Are Still Murdered Here. Um, get involved. And hopefully we can see this totally outlawed nationwide. Um, but yeah, it's um, definitely murder. End Abortion Now. So, now that I have talked about that, um, by the way, it's been almost 50 years since Roe v. Wade, and the Republican Party and the pro-life movement uh, have done nothing. So, let's <clears throat> get rid of that. All right, uh, new, new Dead Sea Scrolls. New Dead Sea Scrolls. Let's pull this up. All right. All right. Israeli experts announced the discovery of more Dead Sea Scrolls as of March 16th, 2021, roughly that around around that time in Jerusalem. Israeli archaeologists on Tuesday announced the discovery of dozens of Dead Sea Scroll fragments bearing a biblical text found in a desert cave and believed hidden during a Jewish revolt against Rome nearly 1900 years ago. The fragments of parchment bear lines of Greek text from the books of Zechariah and Nahum and have been dated around the first century based on the writing style according to the Israel Antiquities Authority. They're the first new scrolls found in archaeological excavations in the desert south of Jerusalem in 60 years. Um, so, that's um, Very interesting information, awesome information too. So we have some new Dead Sea Scrolls, some new fragments from the Old Testament, Zechariah and Nahum is really neat. Um, you know, the Bible has un unbelievable amount of, of manuscripts. Um, you know, we have, for the Old Testament, we have the Greek Septuagint, Right, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Masoretic Text for the New Testament. We have early papyri manuscripts and codices. I mean, there's just so much. Um, and it's really awesome and interesting. It, it really goes to show that, you know, what what the Bible says, what, what Christ says, that his words will never pass away uh, in Matthew 5. And that not one stroke of the law will be done away with, um, according to Christ and the Gospels. So, really awesome stuff. Now let's remove that. Speaking of Christianity, let's talk a little bit about Christian persecution in James Coates. I believe I still have a picture of him here from last, maybe last week. All right, now let's move this up. All right, order... Move to top. Okay. No. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay. James Coates. All right. James Coates, for people who might not know as of right now, James Coates is a pastor over in Canada who is arrested and jailed uh for having a church service when the government said no because covid big bad and scary um so he defied that and had church anyway obeying christ showing true courage and um was jailed for it and spent some sp uh, spent some time in jail and um there was an update that i did last week that you know they were saying that he was going to be held held until may uh at least Min at a minimum uh but from what i've learned just so far what 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 i've kept up with says that the charges are being dropped and that he's being released which is good news great news you know this is this is good stuff but um the question is are they going to let him have church in peace are they going to give him problems in the future it's possible but uh, just wanted to give an update on James Coates. Pray for him. Pray for his family. And, um, you know, 
I'll, I'll, I'll keep people updated on, on this issue. Um, but all that being said, all that being said, now it is time for, uh, Boruto, new Boruto chapter. All right. Boruto manga chapter 56 just dropped, um, this week and give me just a second to set things up for this. Where is this at? Let's look. Um, Boruto manga. Two, I think is what we got here. All right, we have Sumire. No, that's not it. That's not it either. It's not what I'm clicking on. Code. And we should have another picture that I got. All right. There we go. Okay, so the new Boruto manga chapter, chapter 56, is about code. Now on the front, we have Sumire, the class rep in Boruto's class because she's helping treat Kawaki, okay? Background information, spoiler alert, by the way. Um, Jigen, you know, being used by Ishiki Otsutsuki, so Ishiki shows up on the scene, comes out and is fighting Naruto, Sasuke, uh, Kawaki, and Boruto. Kawaki's using his karma, so is Boruto, and uh, Momoshiki kind of takes over Boruto, uses him as his vessel, stabs Sasuke's eye, his Rinnegan is destroyed. That was confirmed in this new chapter. Um, Kurama, the Nine Tails, is no longer within Naruto. Um, not dead, but um, uh, not uh, not not present uh, because he gave his life to help Naruto defeat Ishiki. Uh, tailed beasts can't die. This is confirmed by Masashi Kishimoto. Um, you know they don't they don't just die, but they go through this process so that they can come back. Um, and in this new chapter that came out this week on the eighteenth, we have a couple new people that are on the scene. But before I get into that, let's just kind of go through the chapter. So at the beginning of the chapter, you have Sumire, uh, who is treating Boruto, Bor uh, well, Kawaki, sorry. Sumire is treating Kawaki, and, you know, they're in the hospital and, you know, just kind of talking. And uh, Boruto and Kawaki eventually have a conversation about the karma on their hand and how, you know, their bodies are becoming Otsutsuki bodies, and when that reaches 100%, then, you know, they're going to get taken over um, by the Otsutsuki that gave them the karma. So there's Momoshiki and there's Ashiki. And um, they start talking about being able to put this theory or idea, which I think is plausible, of being able to put their own karma marks on other people so that they can, you know, resurrect within those people. Um, like the Otsutsuki can. And they start talking about Code, this individual who was in Kara. Um, Code is one of the two people that survived Ishiki's experiments with the, uh, the Karma. Everybody else died except for him and Kawaki. And his body was found compatible with the Karma. And... Ishiki is now using code this way, and, you know, Kawaki and Boruto don't know that, and so Kawaki brings up code for Bo Boruto to use as a vessel, and, or to put a karma in, on, you know, and they don't know that Ishiki's already doing this, and that code is already being used, and he's causing up trouble, and now he's kind of like the new villain, new uh, antagonizer being used by Ishiki, and um, so that's going to cause problems when they interact in the future. 
um, Amato is talking to you know Naruto, Shikamaru, all these guys about these cyborgs in code, you know, giving them information about code and these cyborgs that were created um, by Amato in order to fight and take down Jigen, and Jigen is is dead in this chapter, and the chapter. Uh, ends with Code, who is this guy with the red hair right here, finding one of these cyborgs and supposedly about to awaken her named Ida. Ida is this chick right here asleep in this contraption. He goes up to her and says, you who knows all things, Ida, you know, so we have a brand new villain who looks like is going to be a massive problem. Um, so that's what we have going on with the new Boruto chapter. Now, lastly, before I end the show, we've got to talk about the gospel. We've got to talk about Christ being king. So the message of Christianity, the gospel, imagine that you have someone who breaks the law. They stand before a judge. They're found guilty. They're going to be punished with either jail time, a fine, a debt, or the death penalty. In the same way, human beings are sinful by nature. We break God's law, the Ten Commandments, because we're sinners. Everybody, including you and me, has lied, right? Stolen, lusted, and hated others, right? Lust is adultery of the heart, according to Jesus. A hate, a hatred or, or anger, unrighteous anger is murder of the heart, according to Jesus. Uh, we've committed idolatry, we've dishonored our parents, um, we've broken the Sabbath, we've coveted. Um, this is all human beings, excluding Christ, of course. Um, and sinners will answer to God one day for their sins. God is a just judge, and they he will send people to hell for their sins. <clears throat> but if someone pays the fine or the debt or the bail for the criminal, someone bails them out. They can go free, right? That's like what Christ did. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He is truly God and truly man. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life to give righteousness to unrighteous people. He died on the cross when he was crucified on a Roman cross 2,000 years ago to give atonement and forgiveness to those who need it, right? And he rose from the dead three days later, forever defeating sin and death, and to give eternal life to people who are dead in their sins. And, you know, they will also one day be given glorified bodies. So when Jesus died on the cross, he was paying the fine, paying the debt, right? He was bailing us out of God's wrath. Imagine that you are going to get the death penalty, right? And someone takes it for you. That's like what Christ did. But in order to be saved, to be bailed out of God's wrath, must repent and believe in Christ, that means you must turn away from your sins and place your faith and trust and hope alone in Christ alone for your salvation. Uh, Christ is also king. Also, if you repent and believe, if you, if you turn from your sin and you trust in Christ, uh, you'll be saved and you'll have eternal life. Jesus is king. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. His kingdom is on the earth. He's reigning right now. He's on his throne right now, putting all of his enemies under his feet right now. And the world will be one to him. It will be subdued to him. He's doing it right now. Um, Jesus Christ is king. So that's it for today's show. It has been about 40 minutes. Um, notice right here, all my social medias. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, and I used to have Parlor right here. Now I have Gab. I have joined Gab TV, and I post some of my TikToks on Gab Social. So, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, share, and comment. Give me questions and ideas and topics. Uh, show people my videos. Uh, follow me on Gab and subscribe to me on Gab TV. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Twitch. You can still follow me on Parlor. Follow me on Instagram and follow me on my Facebook page. Loving the Coup is the username for everything. It's the same everywhere. You can find me at Loving the Coup on like everything.
So um, thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more gaming content, political com uh, content, and anime content. Peace.